Hey, welcome back to the channel. DIY Dad here out in the garage, which means, of course, we have another project to deal with. And it deals with one of my only real complaints about my 2021 Can Am Spider F3T, and that's the storage. There is a frunk in this one, so you do have a trunk here. And you've got two side bags uh, on either side of the rear pillion seat. The problem that this bike has is none of these will support a full face helmet. The redesign with where they moved the radiator when they went from the uh, STGS style to the F3 shrinks the size of the front so my full face helmet won't fit there. Which means I need to mount a top case to a bike that specifically was designed uh, not to have one. This is the T, not the Limited, which would have had the big Can-Am uh, dual helmet top case. So what we're going to do today is mount a luggage rack and a top case to this bike. With the Spider F3, an F3 Limited would have a large rear trunk right here. The F3T, however, doesn't have that trunk. It has this cover plate and then the two side bags that you would have on the Limited as well. Now under that cover plate is the wiring adapter and everything you would need for that trunk. And I originally looked to try to put a Limited trunk on this bike. And what I found out was due to supply chain uh, issues, the $2,000 accessory trunk that you can get from Can-Am is actually not even available if I wanted to spend that much money. So instead, I'm going to go with a Shad top case. And it's the 58X, it's sitting right over here. I'll do a separate review talking about this case and why I'm going with this particular one. Uh, it's got a really kind of cool design feature to it. We'll discuss that later if I successfully get it installed. So that is going to mount to here. In order to do that, I have to put a luggage rack on the bike. So I've gone with a Baker Built Wings uh, luggage rack. I'll explain why as we go. And we'll start taking this apart and getting that mounted first. So to do that, I'm gonna pull this top cover plate off because I want to look at where the antenna is because I know I'm gonna have to move the antenna and I'll take the rear seat off as well. So first step, we'll pull the rear seat and that plate to get the rear seat off. You're gonna take your key and turn it to the uh, configuration or the wrench position, which show you is here so push the key down turn it that way that's going to release the seat we'll then pull up and off that gives us access to the pressure clips that hold this plate in place so there's one here and one here and then the plate will kind of click up and off and pull out of here so the pressure clips removed then there's just three little uh, kind of body clips back here that are holding it. So you just grab this and lift it up and that'll pop loose. So nothing else we have to do there, set that aside. And that'll expose what's underneath this plate or would be underneath uh, the Can-Am normal top case. Now in the F3, where you have the top case, there's an adapter plate here that allows the top case to be connected. So you're seeing a lot of the places where that would get attached. You also have the wiring loom that goes into the top case. This is where your speakers and your brake lights and everything else are. Then you have this wire, which runs across to the antenna and this little boot here. So I can kind of pull this up and out of the way so that you can see the antenna. And interestingly, my antenna uh, is not actually connected. So this explains why my radio reception hasn't been the best because that, I believe, is supposed to be bolted to the bottom of my antenna. So since this is completely non-functional, I'm going to unscrew this and pull this out of the way. And then I'll look at probably getting a little uh, stubby antenna and probably eventually do like a little 90 degree angle bracket so I can run it like that uh, or relocate it up to the front somewhere in front of the case. Because as it sits, my case is going to go right across the top of this. And as I've just mentioned, this apparently isn't doing anything right now anyway. Removing the antenna is a very simple thing. Uh, there's just a little threaded screw at the bottom so just spin it to the left and this will come out you can see this wire was supposed to go around this and be screwed down to actually get reception but yeah it was uh just never connected so that's great it had to be that way probably from the factory so now that that's out of the way i'm going to uh probably put this cover plate back on and then do the luggage rack and the luggage rack for the Baker Built Wings one is going to attach to these mounting points on the side of the grab rails. It doesn't require removing the grab rails. Uh, it attaches on the outside edge of them. 
So I'll get that in place and start looking at pulling these bolts out and then uh, we'll pop that in place and see what it looks like. For those of you unfamiliar with the design, this is the luggage rack that you get from Baker. Um, I specifically chose this one because it's an open design. There are a lot of them that have a solid kind of rear deck with like a spider cut into it or an F3 cut into it. I wanted this open design to be the most flexible to connect with my top case. Uh, the shad top case comes with this universal mounting plate. So this guy will get mounted directly onto here. Something like that. I'll figure out the exact fitment. Now, normally when you get the case, what you're going to have with this top case is bolts that come down and then sort of like a wing metal bar so that when you tighten it, that holds against something like your luggage rack here. Now I got this uh, specifically for a bike that I don't own because it was available on eBay. We'll talk about that a bit later on or maybe in a different video. So I have a mounting plate that's meant for a Kawasaki, I believe, but that plate will actually line up underneath my rack and bolt directly into this still. So I'll be able to kind of have the best of both worlds. Because I'm dealing with a custom metal plate under a metal rack, I am gonna put a couple pieces of foam on. So uh, I'll get this initially placed. I'm gonna place the rack on the bike first, I think. And then uh, as long as I have clearancing, I'll get the plate and everything mounted. As I'm talking through that, I'll probably actually mount the plate first and then place the entire thing on the bike because it'd be a bit easier to go that route. So. I'm gonna look at getting this mounted and I'll show you how I've done that once I figure out the ins and outs of it. Okay, the shad plate is mounted to my luggage rack and all I did for that is there are these various different holes within the shad plate so you can fit to pretty much whatever mounting system you're using. And then I took the, let's make this without scratching the bike, took the Kawasaki rack that I had underneath, ran the bolts through and tightened them up, got that as straight as I can. Uh, so now we'll install the luggage rack. To do that, we're gonna pull these four uh, bolts here. So these just come out with an Allen wrench and then the luggage rack comes with a longer set so that you can accommodate uh, the distance of the spacer plus the metal here. I'm not gonna do anything as far as a, a shim between the two unless it starts vibrating later and then I'll put like a little rubber washer between them because I think it'll give me enough room. I did on the mounting plate here, uh, throw some of this foam rubber that I had from an insulation that I was doing earlier, um, just to kind of stop there from being any vibration, make sure that this is mounted really, really firm. In my previous spider with the Givi top case, I had just a little bit of kind of rattle that would come from it. So I'm just trying to tighten that down as much as I can. So I'll pull these bolts out, kind of place this and then thread the new bolts in which is going to require two hands, so I'll check in as soon as that's done. To install the luggage rack, you're going to want to pull the rear bolt first. It takes a number six Allen to do that. I recommend getting one on a ratchet handle. They do fight a little bit. Uh, when you do that, there is a spacer and a little washer on the original bolt. You want to keep both of those and then thread the new bolt through. And then place something to protect your rear cover because this paint is super soft and will scratch if you even look at it. So throw a cloth or a piece of foam or something over top of it uh, to stop this from scratching. Then you're gonna align the back hole with the back mount, get those threaded in, uh, kind of with it sitting at an angle, and then you can remove the front ones. That way you don't have to worry about how you're holding the passenger grab rails as you're attaching this. Okay, our luggage rack is mounted. I really like the fitment on this. It looks very clean. It looks like it's meant to be on this bike. And you can see, even with my mounting plate, my screws have clearance off my cover. Uh, it will make it impossible to take this cover plate off without first pulling this luggage rack. Uh, the way that my screws and everything are, it would be a real tight fit in the best of circumstances. So when I get to the point of doing the antenna, I will have to pull all of this off. But it's not a big deal to do that. So I'll throw the case on, see how she looks. And here's our finished product. So this is with the top case mounted on the bike. Now I chose to mount my plate and adapter pretty much as far forward as I could on the rack to keep it as, as close with this back here. There is a backrest kit that I'm gonna get for this that turns it into a passenger backrest. Depending on passenger comfort, you might wanna mount this further back just to give them more ability to lean back. 
I don't typically have passengers, so I'm not super worried about that. One thing I am noticing looking at it, my luggage rack itself is a little bit canted. So I mounted this straight to the luggage rack and it's a little off. This side's a little bit further forward. You can kind of see that from the back. So I will do some micro adjustments to this just to get it kind of evened out. And I'll do that by adjusting the adapter plate over uh, just to kind of get it centered because in particular, and I don't like that the uh, lock cylinder doesn't line up with the BRP logo. So I'll deal with that. That's a minor thing, but this is mounted. It's secure. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, there we go. Top case on an F3T. It's going to wrap us up from the garage. It's about 90 degrees out here, so I'm going to go inside. But before I do, I owe you a dad joke. So, did you hear about the lawyer who tried to sue the airline for misplacing his luggage? Sadly, he lost the case. All right, remember, with any DIY project, it doesn't have to be perfect. Most important step is just to do it. No one's going to see the flaws unless you point them out, like, you know, alignment issues on a top case, that kind of thing. Have a great day. Stay safe. Ride safe if you're on a motorcycle or a trike. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.